full. This is really, really full. Oh, and it's really, really good. I love this cup that Olaf got me. Olaf, if you're watching the video, I really love that cup. You know, I've learned over the years that it's the, it's the little things. It's the little things that often have the most, the most value, the, albeit sentimental value. Hmm in life you know i was lying in bed this morning and as i was lying there i grabbed my phone i was looking at the comments from the video the other day where i asked if there would be people that would be interested in learning how I became a, uh, <laughs> how I became a, a successful web designer. And I laugh at the word successful because that's, that's really relative. I mean, to, to a lot of people, to a lot of people, they'd look at me and they'd say, oh, he's got a nice house. He travels. He's got a nice not one one vehicle but two and he's got a camper and boy he's successful and he's a web developer if i become a web developer then i'll be successful <laughs> and uh you know that's not uh that's not necessarily uh that's not necessarily true because i know I know, you know, I, I just hung up the phone with uh, my old college uh, professor that was teaching me programming JavaScript. And I know that in comparison to a lot of my peers, I, they run circles around me. They all run circles around me when it comes to coding and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I know people. I know people that are significantly smarter than myself. They, they, they can code better than myself. And they go out and they get good jobs. They get jobs that are you know, a hundred thousand a year, hundred twenty thousand a year, you know, something like that. They go out and they get good jobs, but at the end of the day, they're still working for the man. They're still, they're still being told when to show up, when they can go home, when they can have lunch, all that kind of stuff. And then on the flip side of that, I know people, I know, I know people that have gone out and created businesses that bring in more money in a month than 90% probably of all uh, of you that, that that you make in a month. I know people that that are in a year, I should say. I know people that I know of people, I should say. And I know people that bring in so much money in a in a month. Maybe even a week that I make in a year. And, you know, I'm working, I'm working toward that goal of being on that level. And it's possible I'm 58 going on 59 years old. It's certainly possible that I could achieve something like that 
within the next within the next several years it's also possible that i could just lose everything you know so when i when i hear people saying they they want to learn more about what i do the simple answer is to go learn this and then learn this and then learn that you know i mean the 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 very basic the very basic fundamentals you know learn learn uh learn html learn css learn javascript you know i mean the very very basic fundamentals I can sit here and I can say, yeah, learn this, learn that. But there's so much more that goes into reaching a point in one's professional career such as I did. As I was thinking back, I was lying there in bed and having this conversation with Lay is his name, spelled L-E, Lay. But uh, there's so much more to it than just what you're going to learn in an online classroom or an online tutorial or in a book or sitting in a classroom. And you know the the saying hindsight is 2020 and you look back over the course of your life and you can clearly see things that contributed or affected or or or, or directed you in 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 one direction or another, you know. And, uh, and for me, you know, my, my career, if you want to call it that, my career as a web developer probably started way back, way back in the 19, late 1960s, early 1970s, I would have to say. I was born in 63 and back, I grew up in a large family of 10 kids. One of, one of my brothers passed, so 11, 11 children, but I was the sixth child of, of, of 10 that were growing up all in obviously one house. Six boys all in one room. All six boys shared one room. Kind of like bunk style. I think my mom was getting me ready for the military. I think she knew that I was going to join the army. And we had that that we had the third floor of the ho- of the of the home arranged in 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 bunks. There were two windows on each end of the of the room, and there were two beds under each each window and then two beds in the center of the room and uh and uh, when i say that my my career started way back then you know my my mother and father raising 10 children it was a middle income family we had what we needed we really did. We we had what we needed. Not necessarily very much more. You know, we needed a place to sleep. We needed food. We needed, you know, the the health care, the, you know, whatever. We we had what we needed. And that was it. And if we if we wanted anything above and beyond what we needed 
it was upon ourselves, our, ourselves being our, the, the, the children, to go out and and get it, to figure out a way to to get what we wanted. And as children, we did different things. A lot of my brothers, most of my brothers, my older brothers at least, two older brothers, we had paper routes. We'd go out and we'd and and we do the paper, you know, we, we every day. We deliver the paper. Or you know, in the winter time, we'd go out shoveling snow. raking leaves in the spring. I was going door to door and I was selling, you know, state, I, you would read comic books and there were things in the back of comic books that you could sell. Christmas cards, you could sell stationery, you could sell seeds. And you know, you look at the correlation and you say, well, you know, Tom, I'm trying to connect the dots. I'm trying to connect the dots between being a web designer and shoveling snow and, and, and selling Christmas cards. And, you know, the, 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 the dots, you know, the, to, to connect the dot, it... A lot of it goes to, you know, work ethic. It goes, it goes to, to, to work ethic. It goes to, you know, having something that you want, albeit a, mm -hmm. you know, a transistor, transistor radio down at Radio Shack. So you can fall asleep in that room of six boys with a little pillow or a little radio under your head, listening to sports talk shows, you know, or what have you. Or, you know, the, the, the communication skill, having a paper route with 60 some customers and, and talking to those people, walking up to a stranger's house, although they weren't strangers after, you know, a period of time, but nonetheless, walking up to a stranger's house and knocking on the door and talking to people, engaging them in conversation. When I was selling stuff door to door, like Christmas cards in July or coat hangers for my sister and her junior achievement class, I was at the time, the earliest, the, at the earliest that I started knocking on doors, talking to people, I was five years old. Look at a five-year-old in your life right now, albeit an, uh, a son, a daughter, a nephew, a niece, a neighbor's kid. Look at a five-year-old and imagine that five-year-old being me, walking around the neighborhood with a set of three coat hangers, knocking on doors. What I was doing, unbeknownst to myself at that time, I was setting the stage. I was setting the stage for what ultimately would become my career. And, and, and people will say, well, gee, what's the connection? I don't get it. They didn't have even have computers back then. Well, the connection, the connection is, is being able to communicate with people, being able to, to, to read people, being able to, to not only talk to people, but to be able to listen to people. That's all part that that's all part of being in my opinion, a, 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 a successful entre, you call it a web developer, entrepreneur, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So, 
you know, when people say they want to learn what I do, it's not hard to learn necessarily what I do. You could sit down over, sit down over a period of, 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 if you really, if, if you really applied yourself, you sit down over a period of a few to, to several months. And if you, if you're halfway smart, you know, you'll know a lot of, a lot of what I do in so far as the technical aspect of it, you know, but I think what's important to understand is that there's so, there's so much more to it than just learning how to make a picture appear on a screen. There really is. And, you know, so often in life, it's been my observation that people are always, a lot of people are always looking for the easy path in life. I remember back in the day when I was selling real estate, you know, there's a saying that that uh, ninety percent of all real estate agents do ten percent of the business, and ten percent of real estate agents do ninety percent of the business. And the, the, there, there's there's a there's a striking similarity between web developers and real estate agents. And that similarity is that far too often people just think, you know, they, they, they look at the road ahead of them and they say, oh, I don't want to go to college. Oh, that's four years. No, I don't want to go to college. Uh-uh. I know what I'll do. I'll become, I'll become a, a real estate agent. Yeah. I'll become a real estate agent. I'll sell houses. That's what I'll do. Or I'll become a web designer. Yeah, I know this guy on YouTube. He's a web designer. Yo, yeah, he travels a lot. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to become a web designer. Yeah. And you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting because there, there, again, there, there is so much that goes into, there is so much that goes into, uh, getting to a point in, in one's career where, where I'm at. And, you know, let's not overlook Let's not overlook the fact that, you know, for me, for me, it's been, for me personally, it's been by nothing short of, of the grace of God that has gotten me to where I'm at. You know, I just hung up the phone with, 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 with a, who, who I consider a dear friend now, Lay, he was my, he was my teacher. And I told him. You know, I said, Lay, I said, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I would not be where I'm at today were it not for you. And I told him that several times. When I've had a problem, when I, you know, I'm struggling with something, I may have walked out of his classroom 20 some years ago. But anytime I, I need to go back into that classroom, I pick up the phone and I call him. You know, it's not, it's not, you know, always what you know, but who you know. And different people have come into my life. Different people have come into my life. The, 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 the programmer from Poland, Joanna, bless her heart. You know, God knows where I would be right now had Joanna not come into my life and done for me what, what she did did for me. 
And, you know, having that relationship with them, as I've had, that also falls back to the communication skills. You know, it's, 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 it's the, the, the communication skills of, of, of communicating and, and, you know, the, 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 there's an expression, have a grateful heart and be quick to acknowledge those that help you. And that's something that I, I, you know, I learned that. And I, I knew that there was no shortage of people that have helped me over the years. And I know that I have a, a, a grateful heart. And, and I'm always quick to acknowledge. I don't ever want to, to, you know, somebody like, like one of these individuals to think that I take their, I take their help for granted. You know, I always, always tell them, boy, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it weren't for you. I look at, I look at, uh, you know, I look at this, 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 this guy from Certified Transmission. I mean, this guy, Peter Fink, you can go on, just Google Peter Fink, F-I-N-K. This guy, if, if there were ever a self-made man, it'd be this guy. You know, this guy went from from uh, having a, a thousand bucks in a toolbox, opening up a little shop with a with a dream, to I, I couldn't even begin to tell you where he's at right now in his life and what he's achieved with his with his life. But, you know, he, he came into my life. And I, I know I would not be standing where I'm at right now had not he come into my life. You know, so there's a lot of, there, there's a lot more, there's a lot more to, the, the bottom line is that there's a lot more to getting to a spot in life such as where I'm at. than learning how to design a website. And you know, the other thing, I, I think the other thing that, that, that is important insofar as, insofar as looking at somebody like myself and thinking I want that, you can have all of this you can have the house, you can have the car, you can have the camper, you can have the, you can have it all seemingly, but have nothing. You know, you, you, you literally can, you can have it all, but have nothing. I've seen it. I've seen people that seemingly have it all, but at the end of the day, they're not happy. They have nothing. So it's a, uh, it's an interesting discussion, you know, the, um, when I hear people want to hear more about what I do. And, uh, you know, the other thing that, and this is something that still comes to me to this day, something I still struggle with. It's the confidence. You know, my dad, my dad instilled in me over the years the importance of, of one's own confidence and how important that is to be successful in life. And, you know, it, it was interesting that Right about the time that I started to learn web design, I found the book, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. And there were things in there, sayings in there, like anything the human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. And there's no limitations to the human mind, except those that we acknowledge. You know, it was, it was, it was stuff, little things like that. 
And, and it was the hard work. I mean, I made a lot of, I made a lot of sacrifices. I would, I would find myself, you know, sitting down on Friday and Saturday nights, learning coding. You know, I was on a first name basis with all the employees at the, at the Barnes and Noble and stuff. And I'd walk in there with my, with my laptop and my books. And I'd sit in there and I, and I would learn. When everybody else was out, you know, out, you know, at the beach or, or watching football on a Sunday afternoon or, or, or out to the movies on a Friday night. There I was. And if you don't have that work ethic, if you don't have that work ethic, if you don't have that dedication, if you don't have the confidence in yourself, if you don't have the patience, nothing happens overnight. And when I say overnight, you can, you know, overnight can be, you know, I mean, nothing, nothing happens. Nothing happens quickly. Seldom does anything ever happen, quote unquote, quickly. But, you know, for me, in, in, in wrapping this up, for me, web design was a means to an end. From the earliest age, I wanted to travel the world. I would sit in high school. I'd sit there in the classroom and good old Lenny, you know, Lenny there and uh, would, would I, oh, I forget his name now. We called him Lenny. He would teach, he'd be teaching us world history. And up there on the wall would be a map of the world. And you had the, the whole USSR in red. And I'd sit there and I'd just daydream and I'd look out the window and I'd say, boy, that's a big, beautiful world out there. It'd be a shame to live one life and not see as much of it as possible. And, and the, uh, for me, when I, when I had the opportunity when I had the opportunity to go to Europe, I had gotten a job, my first real job as an adult. I'd gotten a job for Wells Fargo Bank and, and it afforded me the opportunity to, albeit on a, on a shoestring budget, it had given me the opportunity to go to Europe. And I loved Europe. I fell in love with Europe within moments of me stepping off the plane in, in Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. I fell in love with it. And my trip over there was only a couple weeks, but I sat on that plane coming back and I thought, I gotta go back. I gotta go back to Europe. I've got to go back to Europe. And I also thought to myself, I wanna share it with people. I want to share my experiences. I want to share that with people. And then this thing called the internet came, came about. Well, the internet had already come about, but the internet was evolving. But I saw the internet. I saw the internet as a, as a means to an end for me. That's what it was. It was a means to an end. It was something that I was going to use to get what I wanted. And what I wanted was to travel. So that gives you some, that gives you some background. I'm, I'm, I, I'll, I'll do, you know, a few of these videos, how to become a web designer. And ultimately I'll, I'll, offer up some specifics as to my particular business model. Wouldn't be hard to duplicate what I do. 
what I do, it's just a, it's, it's a service, service related, any, any service related, just go to, you want to see what I do, go to abcautocare.com and then flip over and go to maliamassage.com, M-A-L-I-A massage.com and then go over to totem, like totem pole, totemappliance.com. It's just a website. There's nothing fancy about it, but it makes the phone ring. My client's phone, it brings them business. You know, and that that's, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about is making, making a small business's phone ring. So, hmm. you know, on a personal note, there's going to be somebody inevitably, don't ask me how to spell that. Inevitably, there's going to be somebody coming along Googling how to become a successful web designer or YouTubing, search, searching YouTube, and they're going to find this guy standing in his kitchen drinking coffee saying, hmm, that's good. That's really, really good. And they're going to think, what the hell is this? <laughs> and then who knows, they could become a subscriber like she rides two wheels over in uh over in oregon but uh you know on a personal note i'll show you what i did yesterday this is a uh you know i don't know i don't know if i would call it a, a labor of love but the weather has finally broken autumn is in the air and you know yesterday i struggled with my lawn those of you that watch my videos you know you know the you know, the, the, call it an obsession that I've got with the lawn. But, you know, annually you should do a process that's called aerating and thatching a lawn. Aerating is where you go through with these little spikes, and the spikes kind of open up the, the soil. They, they put little holes in the soil that are about the size of a dime. And when you're done aerating, the whole lawn is just covered with these little oh, three or four inch plugs of, of soil where, where the aerator brought that, that dirt out. And the purpose of that is to let the, let the fertilizer, let the fertilizer get into the, into the soil and the water. And then the next step that you want to do once a year is called thatching. And thatching is where you go through and you're getting all the, all the dead grass out, you know. So interestingly enough, you know, yesterday, yesterday I, I decided to cut the lawn down because the lawn, <laughs> oh goodness gracious, how to design websites and how to take care of a lawn. But, uh, but yesterday I decided to cut the lawn down when it, when it's really, really hot. You, you want to let the grass grow a certain length because the, 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 the length of the grass, the depth of the grass can protect, protect the roots from the hot sun. But now that our, our hot days are gone, you know, I decided to cut it down because I was cutting this thing, I was cutting this lawn like twice a week. But boy, did I struggle yesterday to get this lawn down to where it's at now. I, I really, in some places, I think I butchered it. You know, but today I'm going to go out and I'm going to get an aerator. And then I'm going to get a, a thatcher. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this lawn. And a lot of people would wait until spring. But I'm not. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in the autumn. Because it just makes more sense to me to do it in the to do it in the autumn when the lawn is nice and relatively speaking healthy you know that's when I'm gonna that's when I'm gonna do it because I'm trying to get this I want to get this lawn ready for uh, I want to get this lawn ready for the spring the spring of 23 that is gonna be that is gonna be the uh, that is gonna be the year Look at this. You know these sunflowers. Since interestingly enough, these sunflowers they bo they 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 bow to me when I come out here. You know, it's like I'm their it's like I'm their King Charles the second. You know, they they're kind of genuflecting to me. Is that the right word, genuflecting? But uh, look at the look at the look at the strawberries. Isn't this something? Look at that. Boy, is that a beauty? 
Is that a beauty or what? Oh, goodness gracious. All right, folks. There's my little, uh, my little pumpkin. You see? Just wonderful. Really, really wonderful. And look at that melon. Oh, boy. Look at that. Boy, if I could just find a woman with melons like that, you know, that would be nice. All right. Have a, uh... <laughs> and I'm talking about those kind of melons, not the other kind. Please. Okay? All right. Have a nice day.